Now in the next question, we want to show that summation d divides n 1 by d is equal to sigma n divided by n for every positive integer n. So for this question, we see here, now d divides n. If d divides n, so n by d is also a divisor, is also a divisor. And generally, we can call this as d dash. So generally, we call n by d dash as d dash. So there are two divisors. So this implies here, we can write d into d dash. This is what is n. And now we consider the set of all divisors. Set of all divisors of n. And let's say that this divisor set is d1, d2 up till dk. So if this is set, or I may want to now write set of all divisors of n so if this is one divisor say if we have d1 so the other other divisor corresponding to this would be n by d1 corresponding to this it would be n by d2 and so on so on we have n by dk now this is also divisor in fact these two set are actually equal written in a different format so this means sigma n which is sum of divisor so this is sum of all divisors so if it is sum of all divisors this is d1 d2 up till so on plus dk i have taken k divisor this is nothing but n by d1 plus so on plus n by dk and this is nothing we simply take common and we get 1 by dk this means it is nothing but it is sigma n by n equal to 1 upon d1 plus so on so on so on plus 1 upon dk and the right hand side is nothing but it is an expression written as reciprocal of divisor where d divides n so that uh, shows that the problem number 8 follows and the star holds so this implies star expression holds okay so now in the similar process suppose now we want to prove the problem number 9 which says if n is a square free integer so whenever we write a prime factorization of n, there are no squares in that prime factorization in the power. We want to prove that tau n is 2 to the power r, where r is where r is the number of prime divisors of n. So again, this uh, to prove this case, what we need to take is take n as a square free integer. This is a square free integer. So if it is a square free integer, that means the prime factorization of n has to be like this. There are no power here. Okay. So where and of course each pi is distinct prime. Pi is distinct primes for every i. Okay. So and from here we can simply write what is it tau n because the power is 1. So this means it is uh, by definition by the formula we have this expression up till kr plus 1 and here the value for k1 is nothing but it is 1 plus 1 and so on this value is also 1 because the power is 1 so this whole quantity is 2 and how many times it will repeat it is 2 to the power r so tau n is nothing but 2 to the power r and where r is the number of prime divisors of n because those prime will come in the prime factorization of n which you can divide the n so that's the result whole which is very obvious now in the this 10th problem there are uh, three cases that uh, we need to discuss the first case is if n is given in this prime factorization then one is strictly greater than n by sigma n is strictly greater than equal to one minus one by p and so on so let's prove the first case here so the first case it is uh, very very simple since the divisors of since the divisors of n include 1 and n itself so it is they always include 1 and n itself so sigma n is always greater than or equal to n plus 1 because it is sum of divisors what is sigma n? Sigma n is sum of divisor. So we have not included all the other divisors which are going to be in the prime factorization of n. But we have only included the first and last. So the sigma n must be greater than or equal to this quantity. And this quantity is strictly greater than n. So from here we can simply say sigma n is greater than n. This implies 1 is less than n by sigma n. So if we want to prove this inequality 1, 
so this shows that left hand side at least this side is proved okay and also we know sigma n is nothing but it is p1 to the power k1 plus 1 minus 1 upon p1 minus 1 and so on pr to the power kr plus 1 minus 1 upon pr minus 1 now you uh, take this division so we have here p1 to the power k1 and pr to the power k r. and then we divide whole we divide this whole quantity so this is actually the product quantity that i now need to divide from here this is the product quantity that i've written in the previous row so this quantity and if we simply open this up this becomes p1 to the power k1 pr to the power kr now just simply take the denominators denominator on the numerator and here we have p1 to the power k1 plus 1 minus 1 and so on pr to the power kr plus 1 minus 1 okay so now this expression what does this expression becomes this is p1 minus 1 up till so on pr minus 1 and from these pi's and now i'm going to cancel out some of the terms here or maybe you can just take it out pi ki plus 1 from here so this will become p1 minus 1 upon p1 to the power k1 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take here pk plus 1 common and this expression will follow up pr minus 1 upon pr to the power kr okay now now note here now pi is always greater than or equal to pi minus 1 upon something pi to the power ki each expression will follow so and this expression is further uh, i can write this expression this is strictly greater than 1 upon uh, maybe i can write it here separately and 1 upon pi minus 1 upon pi ki this is greater than 1 upon pi so if if i look at the numerator this expression is greater than if and if you take the reciprocal of this quantity it becomes 1 upon pi this quantity is smaller than the previous case so now i'm going to use this expression so here what do we get we get 1 is strictly less than n by sigma n this is holding from 2 and this quantity is greater than 1 minus 1 by p1 and up till 1 minus 1 by pr because we see we are going to replace this quantity by p1 p2 and so on so if you replace this quantity by p1 p2 pr and then from numerator if you write this expression if you write this expression this will become 1 minus 1 upon p1 up till so on 1 upon 1 minus pr so this holds uh, the inequality 1 in the second case now we want to prove that sigma n factorial upon n factorial now if you look at the previous first case this is same and from there we can now prove the b part very easily for n factorial we can write this as 1 into 2 into 3 up till so on n this means all these positive integers all these positive integers are divisors of n factorial these are divisors of n factorial okay and there are and there are more divisors of n factorial also so because we we are going to then multiply so this is the bifurcated term and we also know that n factorial is strictly greater than n for n greater than or equal to 3 for 2 it is sometime equal for n factorial may be equal to this for n equal to 2 because 2 factorial is equal to 2 so this means from previous case from previous problem that is the a part what we can say is sigma of n factorial divided by n factorial this is uh, not the pre a part the, the previous problem that we have done in the a eighth question so this is 1 by d d divides n factorial this is nothing but 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 plus so on up till 1 by n plus so on up till 1 by n factorial and this quantity is definitely greater than or equal to this quantity so 
that's what the result holds for the b part now for the c part also now the result is little obvious here let's see how do we prove the c part if n is strictly greater than 1 this is a composite number and we want to show that sigma n is greater than n plus root n what is sigma n this is the sum of the divisors so we have here the sum of the divisors now these are my proper divisors and 1 and n are they are already the divisors so we want to show to show 1 plus d1 plus so on plus dk is strictly greater than under root n if we can show this this implies sigma n is greater than uh, because we we have applied the result over over this term so this quantity is root n and then we have this n which is remaining so we are going to n we are done this imply this this will prove this will prove our result okay so now since n is composite number we have been given that n is a composite number so there is there is a di such that one is less than di so there is a proper divisor that we can take and di divides n and again in the similar process n by di dash divides n so di is less than n this implies one is strictly greater than uh, one is strictly less than n by di and one is less than di this implies one by di is less than one so this implies n by di is less than n so we have this quantity so we know now we got n by di less than n so we have this inequality so that let's call this as equation number one and if di is greater than under root n so it is also possible that our divisor is greater than root n in that case 1 by di is greater than root n so in this case sigma n this is 1 plus d1 plus so on up till n so this quantity is greater than n plus under root n so and now suppose this is what we need to prove and suppose di is less than or equal to root n so this was another possibility so in this case 1 upon root n is less than 1 upon di so this means under root n is nothing but it is n by under root n so this quantity is less than n by di and and we know uh, some quantity uh, di dash this is n by di so di dash is also divisor of n is also divisor of n okay so this means di dash is greater than or equal to n so this means 1 plus di dash plus n is greater than n plus under root n and we know that sigma n is nothing sigma n was 1 plus d1 up till so on up till n so from here we know that sigma n is n plus under root n so we can combine the previous case and this case and that proves us the result so that proves us this case so we have proved it in both the cases so we have in this case also we have proved and in this case also we have proved. so this is b part and this is a part so from a and b result hold so irrespective whichever case we have discussed result holds